From the busy storm track set to plague a lot of the U.S. in the coming days to the tropical storm set to make landfall on the East Coast, there is a lot going on and there's active weather to come for millions. This video has the latest guidance on the active weather, including a look at temperature trends ahead. One Nation Weather before I get deeper into this video, here's a quick reminder to hit that like button to help support this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you're hitting that subscribe button down below if you enjoy this kind of content. Without further ado, I want to jump into this video by bringing you an overview of the jet stream pattern and what it means for the surface conditions as we go across the country in the coming days. Starting as we push out of our Saturday when I'm recording this and into the Sunday evening time frame, you can see multiple areas of stronger jet stream energy that we're going to have to track. One is going to be around a closed center of circulation that is going to be moving into parts of the Carolinas. You can see it there curling around and into some parts of the Mid-Atlantic. That is Tropical Storm Chantal and the energy it is going to be bringing with it through multiple layers of the atmosphere as it makes landfall on the Carolina shores into Sunday. As it moves through that zone and then the Mid-Atlantic through parts of this week, that will impact those zones with at least a potential for some heavy rainfall as well as gusty winds. In addition to that tropical system that will be breaking down in more detail later in this video, we're also going to have to watch this cold front that's going to be lifting out of the Great Lakes and Midwest into points eastbound as well as some of this jet stream energy moving from the northwest to the southeast from places like Montana into the Dakotas and Minnesota. That energy moving through especially the northern and central plains will become critical as it will fuel the next system that will ride across parts of the country through early, mid, and even towards late week. As if that isn't enough, we're going to have another system that gets its act together by the end of this week, especially fueled by this stronger piece of jet stream energy set to move out of the west and into these central plains. Between all of these corridors of heightened jet stream energy, especially as you go on up into the atmosphere, we will see active weather carried out at the surface. I want to start the overview of that now with a look at the future radar. Here's a quick reminder that the awesome weather bell model maps I use are available to you with a free trial link below. Check that out down in the description of this video. As I push this playthrough out of Saturday evening and into the Sunday time frame, you can clearly see how those three areas of jet stream energy are going to result in heavier areas of precipitation closer to the surface. Number one, of course, is going to be with that smaller but closed area of circulation. That is going to be Chantal as it comes ashore in parts of the Carolinas and then eventually send some energy up into parts of Virginia and Maryland late on Sunday. Those zones will get in on a potential for some heavier rain and gusty winds. I think flooding is going to be the main concern and that threat should peak around central and eastern parts of South and North Carolina. In addition to that piece of energy, here's piece of energy number two. We saw that jet stream energy set to be moving out of parts of the Midwest and into the Great Lakes. Well, here's the result of it. Parts of Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, Ohio, even surrounding states should be under the gun for at least scattered storms late on Sunday from that. And then here's another area. This is area number three back into parts of the high plains and the central plains. We will see some new jet stream energy emerging. That could even help in triggering some severe weather moving off at least to high plains on Sunday evening. As the jet stream energy areas move, we will see the shower and storm chances move with them this week. Here we go towards the end of our Monday, July 7th, where you can still see in general where Chantal will have been with at least a spotty chance of storms in parts of the Carolinas and Virginia once again from that remnant energy. You can especially see that area of energy number two uh, continuing to push a front into parts of the Ohio Valley and Northeast. That will elevate storm chances there through Monday. And then you can see energy number three still continuing back into parts of the central and north central plains. I think in the high plains, central plains, and north central zones once again we could get an elevated severe weather threat in addition to a general storm threat as this activity ramps up out of monday and monday night and then into tuesday will mainly be the two frontal type systems that will be producing the better chances for showers and storms there's front number one which was of course the jet stream piece of energy number two it will be moving down into places like the new england states as well as parts of the appalachians and tennessee valley those zones will get the best chance of at least scattered to widespread storm development late in the day. On Tuesday, we will also be seeing that continued energy from the high plains back on Sunday and Monday, now pushing through the central plains and closer towards the upper Midwest. Some storms could still be severe, particularly on that boundary in comparison to the other one. Between those two boundaries, we will likely see a general mess of storm chances in at least isolated to scattered fashion from the central and southern U.S. all the way to the east coast, especially as we go into Wednesday and Thursday. That will bring a little bit of a break from the most intense severe weather, but I think that will begin to ramp back up again, especially for the north central and central U.S. by the time we go into Thursday night and Friday. You can see some action already ramping up there on this guidance with the darker greens indicating likely heavier storms at some point Thursday night. That is going to be with that new low pressure system and jet stream energy set to move through at the end of the week. As that traverses the country, that could be a stronger front, and wherever it goes, 
could get involved in some act of severe weather each afternoon and evening. Since I refer to Chantal as piece of energy number one, let's go ahead and dive into a look at it and break it down in more detail first. I'll talk a little bit in more detail about the storm chances across the rest of the U.S. That will be in just a few minutes. Here's a look at Chantal on satellite as of our Saturday evening. You can see this infrared imagery indicates a pretty healthy low pressure system slowly drifting north. It's eventually going to curl back towards the Carolina coast as we go into Sunday. As of the time of this recording, the low pressure center is somewhere right around here on the west side of some of the strongest thunderstorm activity. That really indicates that this is a weaker system. We don't have it really wrapping around in full. As I mentioned, though, this will bring some heavy rain and gusty wind into the Carolinas in particular, regardless. Here's a closer look at how this system is expected to track into the Carolinas, as well as the intensity of the storm as it is expected to do so tonight. As we go to around 2 a.m. on our Sunday early morning, so within 12 hours of this video being posted, that is when Chantal is expected to be nearing landfall. It should make landfall somewhere between Charleston and Georgetown in South Carolina if the forecast holds. Winds are expected to be around 50 miles per hour at the landfall site. Gusts could be upwards of 60 to 65 miles per hour. In general, though, the wind field will be pretty small at its peak. There will be some broader 30 to 40 mile per hour gusts expanding over a lot of the eastern Carolinas, though. By the time this makes its way further inland, we will see some 30 to 40 mile per hour winds possibly being sustained in parts of North Carolina by early Monday morning. Overall, though, again, this is going to be mainly a rainmaker. Taking a closer look at the evolution of Chantal on Future Radar to finish up the Chantal segment, you can see that the HRRR model is indicating that it will get closer to the coast, especially in terms of the amount of rain it's producing on shore as we go towards this evening. Regardless of exactly when the center comes on shore, we should see the gustiest winds from Charleston up to Georgetown to around Myrtle Beach in South Carolina. Some gusty winds will also be coming on shore with some of these east to west moving bands of rain from Whiteville and Southport all the way on up towards Kitty Hawk and in points in between in North Carolina. Overall, we will see a lot of the rain expanding through the northeastern sliver of South Carolina and then through a lot of North Carolina if this goes as this guidance is indicating for the around Sunday morning time frame. As the day goes on, we'll see some of the heavier rainfall right around the center of this storm tracking up into parts of central North Carolina. Some of the bands closer to the eastern North Carolina shores, though, at any point through the day could be the ones that produce the better chance for an isolated spin on tornado. Overall, flooding will be a isolated scattered in possibility with the heaviest bands, and then things should ramp down in terms of intensity as our heavier part of rainfall and the center of circulation moves towards a place like Richmond, Virginia by Monday morning. Now I want to pivot the focus away from just Chantal and also talk more about increments of precipitation and where we could see the best chance of flooding and severe weather in other parts of the USA. As we go through late Sunday into early Monday, this weather prediction center guidance is indicating that in addition to the heavy rain totals in eastern North Carolina, for example, from Chantal, there will be other parts of the country that get heavier rain. One zone is going to be along and ahead of that front that's going to be drifting through the Great Lakes and Midwest. Wherever we get the heaviest rain total, over an inch to an inch and a half of rain, somewhere from Missouri up to Michigan or in points in between, that's where at least isolated flooding could come together. Anywhere along and ahead of this front, there could also be some very brief, severe weather, particularly in the form of damaging winds during that time frame. Also on Sunday evening, there will be some heavier storms at least around the eastern part of Colorado into western Nebraska and western Kansas. Some flooding and severe weather could certainly come out of that as it ramps on up, and we'll see more of that as we go through Monday afternoon and evening in those zones. The front over in the Ohio Valley and Northeast could also produce more isolated flooding and severe weather as it moves through during, again, Monday evening into early Tuesday. Eventually, as we go towards midweek and even towards late week, we will see a lot of our storm chances getting focused in a broader sense over the southeastern quadrant of the country. The general major severe weather threat and general threat for isolated to scattered and flooding will be on the lower side. However, a more focused area of that could get itself together as the week ends, as we see that next system likely beginning to erupt out of parts of the north central U.S., and that will eventually move to the southeast. Here's a closer look at areas anticipating severe weather over the next couple of days. With that front on Sunday and Sunday night moving through parts of the Midwest and the Great Lakes, the Storm Prediction Center is not anticipating severe weather for that time frame as of now. That is indicated by the light green shade that just indicates a general thunderstorm chance that they are highlighting. Sure, a storm could go severe, but organized severe weather is not anticipated. It's a different story with that 
third piece of energy that I was discussing earlier that will be moving out of parts of the high planes and into the central planes. Sunday and Sunday night, the level one to level two of five threat over places like New Mexico, Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Colorado, Wyoming, Nebraska, and South Dakota indicates potential for damaging winds, hail, and possibly an isolated tornado. That piece of energy number three will continue bringing severe weather possibly out of the high plains all the way into the north central U.S. on Monday and Monday night. A level one to level two of five threat has already been issued for those zones at that time. The front further east, though, might try to ramp up some severe weather, at least in the interior northeast on Monday. That's indicated by the Storm Prediction Center already putting out a level one of five threat from Buffalo to parts of Bangor. Let's now talk about some temperature trends as well as the forecasted high temperatures across the country to end this video. As we go through the Sunday to Monday time frame of the upcoming week, especially the nation's midsection will be around to cooler than average in terms of temperatures as we see a lot of thunderstorm action ongoing in those zones. Thunderstorms, of course, are a result of big clouds forming and as those big clouds spread out, Without a huge front in place, we can still see temperatures around to below average. Further east, we will see a little bit of drier conditions, with the exception of where we see Chantal. At least for the time being, that means warmer than average conditions are likely over places like the Appalachians and into the northeast. Back out west, we will see our ridge that's going to build even more by Tuesday and Wednesday already starting to get going. That means warmer than average temperatures there. Look at how that warmth expands out west and even into some parts of the high plains by Tuesday and Wednesday. Especially on up in Washington State, Oregon, Idaho, and Montana, temperatures could be upwards of 10 to 20 degrees above average at times as we see that high pressure getting itself together. Further east, with some of the active weather ongoing and some of those weaker fronts moving through, temperatures should be around average with the exception of the immediate east coast. Overall, I don't expect any major cool downs this week, though, and the same trend will continue even as we go towards Thursday. Let's zoom through a look at what some of those anomalies mean for actual temperatures day by day into the week ahead. Starting with the forecast from the National Digital Forecast Database, for our Sunday, July 6, you can see that a little bit warmer than average means that temperatures will be well through the 90s anywhere from the Gulf Coast region, including Florida, all the way up through Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, and even up to the Ohio Valley region. Where Chantal will be, there will be a little bit of a relief from the heat. So if you don't get flooding or too extreme of winds, could be a good thing. Bring your temperatures down a bit with some low to mid 80s in parts of the Carolinas. Out west in the plains, you can see some zones are going to be only in the 70s as you go further north, around 85 to 90, which isn't too bad for this time of the year as you go further south. Further west, watch how the 110 degree reading that will be in a place like the southeast valleys of California will become 110 all the way up to around the southeast Washington valleys by the time we get towards Tuesday. Yeah, that's that intense warm up, sending triple digit heat into the valleys all the way on up to the Canadian border. By midweek this week, the central and eastern U.S., without any crazy anomalies, it looks pretty normal. 90s down closer to the Gulf Coast and the southeast coast. Some values will be a little bit closer to 100 in Georgia and South Carolina, though. That is definitely above average, at least in that little strip. Further north, though, you can see here a lot of low to mid 80s, some upper 80s. If anything, around to above average further east, a little cooler than average towards the upper Midwest. Nothing crazy, though. Same deal on Wednesday further east. The main deal is just going to be that heat starting to expand out of the west and into at least the high plains. That is going to be a major heat wave through at least midweek. With that being said, that brings me to the end of this video, where I do want to give you that quick reminder to hit that subscribe button if you have not already. I do want to really end this video with a, a bit of a deeper finish than usual, though. I want everybody who especially, you know, believes in God to be just sending prayers down to the people in Texas. This is a very unfortunate situation that has been occurring in central and south central parts of the state with the flooding as of the last couple of days. People have been missing. Some bodies have been found. There have been a, many people found dead, unfortunately, as a result of the floodwaters there. So please be praying for the families who still uh, have loved ones missing or for those who have just lost loved ones in that flooding. There are so many people affected, if not directly, then indirectly by that flooding as well. So again, please be praying for all of that going on there. With that being said, though, God bless everyone. I'll see you in the next update.